Good afternoon, Jamaica. Thank you so much for joining us on this uh, version of Consular Conversations Live. It's April 19th, 2023. I'm Veronica Chuskevich. I was new last month. Now I'm a veteran to this platform. And I'm joined this afternoon by Karn Carlson, who is the Immigrant Visa Chief at, in the Consular Section at U.S. Embassy Jamaica. Um, before we begin a dialogue, I just want to remind you to follow us on Twitter and Facebook. It's at U.S. Embassy J.A. Again, our Twitter and Facebook handles are at U.S. Embassy J.A. Please note that we cannot and will not answer specific questions about your individual case or application in this very public forum. You're entitled to privacy about your own situation, and we don't have access to detailed case information during the program. Now, before we begin, just a reminder of a couple of email addresses you can write with specific case information. Um, for American Citizen Services, the email address you want to use is kingstonacs at state.gov. For non-immigrant visa questions, you can always write kingstonniv at state.gov. Immigrant visa questions, you can type in the comment box, especially for today, since you have the expert. But if you have case-specific questions, <clears throat> kingstoniv at state.gov. Um, I hope you all have recovered from Carnival this weekend. I was there. It was a really nice time. Um, but I'm here now, so let's talk immigrant visas with Mr. Carlson. Do you have anything um, to sort of announce or begin with? Uh, good afternoon. I just want to say, as Veronica said, thank you for joining us. Um, we are always happy to have this opportunity to to share with our our, our applicants, our customers. Um, so th thank you for joining us. And um, I'm just going to put this out there. Last month, we scheduled nearly 2,000 that's nearly 2,000 immigrant visa interviews. That is, as far as I know, that's a record for the past 10 years. Uh, it's probably going to be a while before we're gonna able, going to be able to get to those numbers again. But I just want to let you know that we are doing everything we can to issue as many visas as possible. Now, I understand that there's a huge backlog out there, and we are working very hard to get that down, but everyone on my team, and I work with the best team in the embassy, everyone on my team are committed to issuing visas to help reunite families. We love what we do. Thank you. Um, oh, one announcement before uh, we get too far into the system, um, into the program. Do uh, we, it has to do with non-immigrant visas. It's a temporary change in sort of our operating procedures here in the embassy. Due to high seasonal demand for temporary work visas, also known as H visas, um, particularly the H2B and H2A programs, we have to temporarily suspend the intake of interview waiver renewal cases for B1, B2 visas, also known as the visiting visas. So as a result, the processing times for renewal cases and wait times for tourist visa interviews is going to increase over the next few months. So applicants are therefore urged to plan for their visa needs well in advance. Now, just as before, individuals with dire family emergencies or urgent medical needs can request expedited appointments using the guidance provided on our appointment website. We definitely recognize the impact this may cause on people's travel um, and really thank you for your continued patience during this um, period of seasonal demand for the worker visas. Um, okay. Uh, why don't we jump into a few questions we're getting about immigrant visas. Philip from YouTube is asking, what is the wait time for interviews after the NVC approval? Okay, Philip, thank you for that question. And that is going to depend on the category of the visa. Um, immediate relatives, IR categories, that's IR1, IR2, IR5, so that's spouses, children, and parents of U.S. citizens. There are no priority dates. There's no numerical limits on those. So normally, normally, as soon as the NVC clears, uh, documentarily completes those cases, they send them to us when we offer the capacity. 
all the other categories, family preference. If your, <clears throat> excuse me, if your visa category starts with an F, uh, then there are numerical limitations. So it's going to depend on your priority date. We don't have visibility on what categories and what timing MVC is scheduling for us. Uh, I will tell you that there is a backlog at the NVC, and it's a large backlog. Uh, it's more or less one year's worth of work, and that's just because of COVID. We are st it's, it's like if you have a huge snowstorm in the north. Where I'm from in Minnesota, they've been dealing with huge snowstorms, the heaviest snowstorms in history. It takes a while to dig out from a so snowstorm. It's going to take us a while to dig out from this huge backlog. So I can't tell you what uh, documentarily complete dates the NVC is working with. Uh, the NVC might be able to share that information with you, but we are scheduling as many interviews as we possibly can. Veronica and our, the rest of the members of our team are doing a great job of scheduling and interviewing and issuing as many as we possibly can. That is true. And I mentioned this last month, but I'll say it again as a frontline visa adjudicator, nothing makes me happier than hitting that issue button at the end of an interview. That is a wonderful feeling. That's why I signed up for this job. Yep. Um, okay, so next question is from Aviel on Facebook. What is What if your passport has expired before the visa appointment? Do I need a new passport and do I have to bring it to the interview? Okay, that, that is a good question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, we cannot put a visa into an expired passport. So if your passport has expired or is about to expire, uh, you, you should go out and get a new one. And general piece of advice to anybody out there, if your travel documents are about to expire, and I'm, I'm going to say within the next six months to a year, you need to start working on uh, updating them now, whether you're sure that you always have valid travel documents. So yes, you need to bring with you a valid travel document when you come to your embassy, to come to your appointment at the embassy. Now, if you have a valid uh, non-immigrant visa, a valid visiting visa in an expired passport, you need to bring that with you to your immigrant visa interview also. Mm -hmm. And if you don't bring it with you, we'll be asking you to mail it in and that will prolong the time it takes for us to issue your visa. So not just in terms of visiting visas you might have, but any kind of document you think you might need at the interview, correct me if I'm wrong, the best policy is to bring it. It's much, much better to become, to be over-prepared at a visa interview than under-prepared and have us asking for A, B, and C to be sent to us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. if, if you're in doubt about whether to bring a document, bring it with you. Remember, you cannot bring phones into the embassy, so if you need to bring pictures or other documents, you need to print them out and bring them with you. Um, it's always better to bring more documents than fewer documents. And it's important that you read the, doc, uh, the letter that you got scheduling your appointment so you know what documents to bring with you. Make sure you bring them. Because otherwise, we're going to give you a letter and tell you you need to send this into us. And that causes uh, delays for you and us. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And one more thing since we're talking about that. Um, original documents because we see a lot of scanned or photocopies of documents and if they if it's a Jamaican document a birth certificate divorce decree marriage certificate certificate of no impediment if you've received a document from the R e RGD do not bring in a photocopy bring in the original right um, police certificates also we need yes. the original of that and one thing to point out where we see a lot of people forgetting if your child is petitioning for you, so you're an IR5 category, a parent of US citizen, you need to bring in the original of the child's birth certificate. A lot of people forget that and that causes a lot of delays. Definitely. Okay, Richard on Twitter is asking, can I travel on the date that my immigrant visa expires? Boy, that's a good question and with my obsessive compulsive disorder, <laughs> I would never do that. You can. Me neither. But but you, I would strongly recommend you don't take the chance because what if there's an air, uh, a delay? What if your aircraft has to divert someplace else because of weather? Yeah. What if? Don't wait until the last minute. 
Mm-hmm. I would I would I would say travel at least a day or two in advance because you never know what's going to happen. You might get in a a car accident on the way. You might forget yeah. something on the way to the airport. So please don't take chances. Travel be well before your visa expires. Yeah. So Richard, technically speaking, yes, but would we do it? Definitely not. No. All right. Uh, Next question is, I think, also a good one. Tijuana on Facebook is asking, can I apply for a visiting visa? I'm assuming you're referring to the B1, B2 visa class. If someone is petitioning for me, so has an immigrant petition in for me. That's, That's a very good question. And we see that circumstance come up all the time. And our colleagues in the non immigrant visa unit see that all the time. So yes, you can apply for a visiting visa. You can apply for B1, B2, an F1, a J1. You can apply for any of those while you have somebody petitioning for you. Um, But there's one consideration that you need to keep in mind if you're applying for a visiting visa. The burden is upon you, the applicant, to demonstrate to us, the officers, that you're going to use that visa for the purpose for which it was intended. The The law presumes that you are an immigrant. The law presumes that you will go to the United States and stay there. So you need to demonstrate to us that you're not going to do that, that you're going to return to Jamaica. And how you do that is up to you. And you might only have a few minutes to do that, but the burden is upon you to demonstrate that you will use that visa and return to Jamaica. Definitely. Um, Okay, we have a lot more questions on immigrant visas, which is good, but I'm just going to take this opportunity to pause for a minute and uh, another announcement from our colleagues in the American Citizen Services section. They wanted us to... um, to note during this program that unfortunately there have been several recent vehicle accidents resulting in death or serious injury of U.S. citizens. So if you are an American citizen considering um, travel to Jamaica or living here now, and also Jamaicans, of course, please be careful while driving in Jamaica, including in taxis, vans, and personal vehicles. Be sure your driver follows the rules of the road, practices good driving, and avoid traveling between towns at night. Um, So we've seen increased vehicular accidents and hate to see that, so be safe out there. Um, Also, just a quick reminder on email addresses you can use if you have case-specific questions. Uh, non-immigrant visas, Kingston NIV at state.gov, immigrant visas, Kingston IV at state.gov. And if you're just tuning in, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook at US Embassy JA. Um, all right. Next question, if you're ready. Sure. <laughs> what happens after my medical exam? How long does it take for the embassy to get the information? That's from Michelle on Facebook. Well, that's probably the number one question lately. Um, Mm -hmm. And I understand that there are or have been shortages of some vaccines in Jamaica. It it is an island, so sometimes logistics for things like that can be a challenge. Um, We work very closely with Andrews. We have a great relationship with them. They know what they're doing. They've been doing this a long time. Uh, normally, from the time of your medical exam appointment, it's a couple of weeks until we get the results. Mm-hmm. For most of you, those results are transmitted to us electronically. Sometimes they send us a hard copy of that medical exam, but normally it's a couple of weeks. Now, if you're missing vaccines or you've got outstanding tests or you've got a medical condition that's not treated, it will take longer than that. But again, normally it's a couple of weeks and then you have to give us some time to review that and review everything else that that's in your case. And it takes a while. We work with thousands of cases every day and it takes us a while to get through all these cases. So I'm going to always, always, always ask you to be patient with us. If you, sent, if, if you find out that Andrews sent the medical exam to us yesterday and you send us an email today, we're probably not going to have an answer. It's probably going to be a few days before we can give you an answer. So I'm going to ask you to please be patient. And when you're sending us those emails, Veronica has mentioned the email addresses a couple of times. Please send us emails, but please send us one email. Don't send mm-hmm. us multiple emails. Um, a lot of people, I think, think that, Oh, if I send 15 emails on this subject today, 
they're going to they're going to notice and they're going to respond. We are working on the oldest emails that come in first. Sure. Um, we will respond to your emails, but it will take us time. So please be patient with us, and please, again, wait until we've had the opportunity to review the documents that you've sent in or review the medical exam. We, we are working as hard as we can. We are issuing a lot of visas. A lot of you are gonna get a lot of visas in the next few days. True. Uh, okay, speaking of medical exams, uh, related question, Kenroy on Twitter is asking, how can <clears throat> applicants know if they meet the vaccination requirements to immigrate? Are COVID vaccines still required? So kind of a twofer. Oh, that's a perfect question. I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you for asking that. Um, so there are a couple ways that you can find that out, uh, find out what vaccines are required. You can go to the CDC website, just search CDC uh, required vaccines. Um, you can, con probably the best way is contact Andrews themselves. They will tell you exactly what's needed. We don't know the exact requirements for vaccines. That's that's not part of what we do. That's uh, Andrews, they are the experts on this. They're very good at what they do. Contact Andrews. You can also look at travel.state.gov. That's travel.state.gov. That's a perfect website for anything related to travel to the United States. But contact, uh, go to travel.state.gov, contact Andrews, or go to the CDC website. But yes, the COVID vaccine is required. And I know there are a lot of people out there who aren't uh, completing their medical exam requirements because they're probably thinking, ooh, the United States is going to drop the COVID requirement. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, we have not heard we, anything We've not like heard that. any rumors. So I wouldn't wait thinking, oh, they're going to drop the COVID vaccine requirement. I doubt that requirement is going away anytime soon. So if you want to travel to the United States, get your COVID vaccine yesterday and get all the other required vaccines yesterday. Get them as soon as possible because there are always, there's always a possibility for a shortage of those things. Yes, and, and very recently, if not still ongoing, there is a shortage for a second dose of COVID vaccine for yes. minors. And so it's really too bad because you see, you know, you interview people that are ready to go and you're ready to hit that issue button, but there's an outstanding COVID vaccine for the minor because of the shortage. Exactly. So, um, so the sooner the better. I would totally agree with that. All right, let's do one more medical related question. Sure. Uh, Monica on Facebook is asking for a K2 case, does the child who plans to travel after the principal applicant need to complete the medical and interview at the same time as the principal applicant, the K1, I'm assuming here, or can it be done within the within one year of the approval of the visa? So can you talk a little bit about medicals for principal applicants and derivatives and then also um, uh, traveling uh, okay. derivatives. I, I got to say the questions today are probably the best since I've been on hook. Facebook Live. They are really good <laughs> questions, so keep them coming in. Um, K2 interviews, K2 is a child of the K1 primary applicant. So K2s, you do not need to do the interview or the medical exam at the same time as the primary applicant. You do need to have the whole process done within one year. If the K-2 visa is not issued within one year of the K-1 visa being issued, can't travel. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very, very important that you understand this. The K-2 visa must be issued. That doesn't mean interview scheduled, interview completed. The K-2 visa must be issued within one year of the K-1 visa being issued. Mm -hmm. But yes, the K-2 has to go through um the medical exam just like the k1 they don't need to do it at the same time i believe the vaccination requirements for k1s and k2s are different from the other categories so i'm going to ask you to contact andrews for any questions you have about vaccinations for k1s and k2s okay thank you um all right this is another very good question and when i was training for this job this not to preface it this way, this was the most confusing part of my training to becoming a consular officer. Karn, how do priority dates work? Oh, I've been doing this job for a few years and I don't understand it all that well. <laughs> Great. So, as I mentioned, there 
uh, immediate relative categories, IR1s, 2s, and 5s. Those are parents, uh, I'm sorry, spouses, children, and parents of U.S. citizens. Then their family preference, um, F1, for example, F2, F3, F4, and so on. For immediate relatives, there are no numerical limitations. For F, for family preference, there are numerical limitations. Congress has determined that there can only be a certain number of people in each of those categories, and they further limit it by countries. So an applicant, an F1 from Mexico, for example, is going to have a whole different uh, date system than an F1 from Jamaica. So the way State Department manages those quotas, Congress has said, and I don't know what the exact numbers are off the top of my head, but let's just say Congress has said 100,000 F1s from around the world can enter the United States every year. State Department is going to use priority dates to manage that flow. So the, the sooner your application makes it through the process with USIS and then goes over to NVC and makes it through the process with NVC, then you become documentarily complete and you have a priority date. So those two things combine to help in, in determining when your appointment is scheduled. And that priority date is the more critical of those two dates. So if you have a priority date of the 1st of July, 2022, and somebody else, your neighbor has a priority date of the 1st of May, 2022, you can estimate that they are probably going to get interviewed two months before you. No guarantees because there are no guarantees in life, but the person with an earlier priority date in the same category is normally going to be scheduled for an interview sooner. And again, this, this, depends on the category. A person, uh, an F4 with a priority date of July 1st of 2022 is a whole different um, category than an F1 with a, the same priority date. So you can't always compare uh, those different things. True. And if my priority, Samuels is asking from Facebook, if my priority date has passed but I have not been contacted for an interview, should I be worried? <clears throat> Okay, so if you're not sure where you are in the priority date uh, situation, go to travel.state.gov and search for Visa Bulletin. And it normally ends up over on the far right uh, side of the page down near the bottom. Uh, and you can look for your category and look for the, prior the current cutoff date. Your priority date must be before that cutoff date in order for you to be eligible for scheduling for an interview. So let's say that your case is current. Your priority date is before that cutoff date. Well, then you have to ask, is your case documentarily complete? I can't answer that. You have to contact NVC. They can answer that. So let's say that your case is both current and documentarily complete. Then probably what, what the case is, is the National Visa Center is waiting for us to tell them we've got capacity in July for X number of interviews. And then the National Visa Center will start scheduling those. The National Visa Center is scheduling applicants for the month of June right now. So you're, there are probably gonna be, I don't know, five, six, 700 of you who are going to, going to get appointment letters within the next few days. Mm. Um, so if, you, if your case is current, and documentarily complete, and you have not yet received a letter from the National Visa Center scheduling you for an appointment with us, contact NVC. Please don't contact us, because we're going to tell you to contact NVC. And earlier in the program, uh, Veronica mentioned expedite requests for tourist visas. We have this, a similar kind of thing for immigrant visas, but it's a slightly different process. All expedite requests all expedite requests for immigrant visas must go through the National Visa Center. If you send us an expedite request, we are going to ask you to contact NVC. So please just save us both a bunch of time. Contact NVC and ask. You can find out what your status is and you can uh, submit an expedite request. When you submit an expedite request, make sure that you provide the proper justification. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, couple of non-immigrant visa questions slash announcements. 
Um, there's one question I think I can take. The two two, Sammy on Facebook says the 221G refusal letter is confusing. It says to send documents. How do I do that? Do I have to use the courier? The answer is, I'm sorry, it's confusing. Uh, yes, if you must send documents, you must use our courier service. Um, you cannot just address um, the documents in a private mail envelope and send it to the embassy. And there are instructions on that pink 221G letter for how to use the courier service. Um, Another announcement from NIV, just an update. On March 30th, the fees for visiting visas are going to increase, B1, B2 visas. Currently, the application fee is $160. That fee is going to increase to $185. The last time the fee increased was in 2012. That was 11 years ago. And um, so this fee increase will um, go into place at the end of May. For certain other petition-based non-immigrant visas like H's, L's, O's, P's, Q's, R's, I'm trying not to just say the alphabet here, um, fees will increase from $190 to $205. So um, just be advised of that NIV, non-immigrant visa um, change. Okay. Uh, Shan one more? Sure. All right. Uh, Shanice on YouTube is asking, I have a green card, but while I was visiting my family in Jamaica, I lost it. What should I do? Okay. So th that's a good question. I appreciate that. So I'm going to assume that you've been outside the United States for less than uh, one year. So then you would be applying for what we call a board foil. And there is an application that you have to fill out for that. And there is a fee that you have to pay for that. And I'm going to ask you to send us an email with uh, your information. That email address is, is an, uh, an email address that Veronica hasn't shared yet. That's kingstonivappointment at state.gov. kingstonivappointment at state.gov. And you're going to provide your name and your date of birth. And if you have it, your A number, your alien registration number. Uh, and then we will give you the information that you need about the fee to pay and the form to fill out. And then you come in for an interview. You have to come in to the embassy to do this. There are a lot of people who find out, who call us from Montego Bay. I lost my green card um, on the way to the airport. I need something to get to the United States. You, we can't do this in Montego Bay. You have to come down to see us. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've been outside the United States for more than a year, that's a different process, but it's the same email address, Kingston IV appointment at state.gov. Okay, thank you very much. So we are drawing to a close here this <clears throat> afternoon. Just a reminder to follow us, the U.S. Embassy, on Twitter and Facebook at U.S. Embassy JA. Um, your questions were fantastic, I thought, this afternoon. They Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. We are planning on another Consular Conversations Live next month in May, so please stay tuned for that. If we did not get to your question, you can ask then, or you can ask at kingstonniv at state.gov, kingstoniv at state.gov, or kingstonacs at state.gov. And... Um, on that note, have a lovely rest of your week. Karn, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and uh, have a great evening. <laughs>